I spoke with Ralph Lauren CEO Patrice Louvet at the National Retail Federation's annual conference here in New York. He weighed in on how his company is handling inflation and supply chain disruptions. Listen. We are prepared for, for an environment that will be inflationary through both the pricing power that we have demonstrated over the past about four years and also through, this goes back to the supply chain conversation we're having, through the supply chain capabilities that we've built around the world that allow us to drive productivity and efficiency, which then helps us offset some of the cost pressures. I also had a chance to talk with Albertson, CEO, the big grocer, Vivek Sankaran, about food inflation and whether he thinks that rise will continue. We are prepared that this will go on for the next six months, uh, maybe eight months, uh, and then that things will normalize when we start lapping what we're going through now and supply comes in um, and some of the transportation challenges ease up. Uh, but right now what we're doing is to make sure that we are prepared to give customers choices, own brands, different price points, different cuts of meat, and so on. Let's bring in National Retail Federation President and CEO Matthew Shea, who joins us now in a closing bell exclusive. Matt, first of all, kudos for pulling off this event with thousands and thousands of people in New York in the middle of a pandemic. It was great to be up on stage with those folks. How would you characterize what you're hearing from some of the leaders in retail right now with supply chain and inflation and Omicron all sort of clouding the outlook? Well, Sarah, it was, it was great to have you with us yesterday. We're really nice job on the conversations that you had with Patrice and Vivek. And as you know, John Ferner yeah. of Walmart was on, Brian Cornell of Target, Corey Berry of Best Buy, Marvin Allison of Lowe's, uh, Ken Chenault was on, Mark Morial from the Urban League. We really had a nice uh, group of execs that were there to talk about all of these issues. And uh, Patrice and, and Vivek both highlighted, I think, the inflation issue is real and is persistent across all categories. You've been talking about it in the last hour, David Solomon's comments. I mean, wage inflation is not going to go away. And even if some of the other uh, inflationary pressures ease, as Vivek was saying there later this year in some categories, the wage inflation is not going to go backwards. It's only going to go up. So we have some challenges on the inflation side. The supply chain issues are going to persist, I think, the rest of this year until we get supply and demand back in the balance. And that won't happen until everyone gets back into the economy and the rest of the economy is fully open. What about on the demand side? What, what are you hearing? What are you picking up as far as consumer spending and what the outlook is and how it might be different than last year, which is, was super strong? Yeah, it was very strong. And, and uh, as, as you've reported, uh, the forecast for retail sales for the holiday season was about 12 percent. We actually did 14 percent. Those numbers just came out on Friday. So very, very strong uh, numbers. The consumer was engaged month over month. December was down a little bit. I think that's because people really started earlier and they were out there in October pulling some of those sales forward. So uh, Vivek alluded to it there. Uh, lapping this year's sales will get increasingly challenging as we go into the year and maybe consumers shift some of their buying habits, their spending goes back into other categories on the experience side, on the service side, and uh, moves away from the good side. But uh, there's, there's still a lot of strength in the consumer economy, trillions of dollars in savings. They've paid down debt. Uh, household net worth is improved. So I think overall, we're in a good place. We just have to manage through the inflationary challenges and, and get the demand back in line with, with what we can produce in the way of supply. What's your view about buy now, pay later? We've seen such a big uh, growth there, and, and it might well mean that uh, if uh, consumers default their punishments, the fees they face are lower. But, of course, if we get to a point where some of them default, there's suddenly been a, a huge amount of growth in, in lending to consumers there. Yeah, well, I, I think that's one of the things we always watch is uh, what sort of consumer uh, credit is being carried, what, what's the consumer debt load. Uh, consumers are in a very good place now, as we were just discussing. Savings rates are extraordinarily high by historical measures. Uh, households have paid down debt. Uh, there are all kinds of ways in which companies and their partners are trying to serve consumers as the environment continues to change and evolve. And I think they're going to continue to meet consumers' needs. And uh, I think people are going into this understanding they have a range of solutions that work for themselves and their families, and they'll try to find the ones that work best for them given their own financial situation and how much risk they want to take on.